Hey, yeah, uh, welcome back. Mm -hmm. So we have a running query here, but the only thing we do need to do now is to connect to a database. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So let's see how we can do that. Let me close this vendor folder here. Completely unneeded. All right, so how do we connect to a database? Now, there's, um, there's a database folder here in the database file in config. So if you go to the config folder here, and then you just move a bit, you see that there's a database.php. Mm -hmm. So right here is where you choose the database connection you're going to do. So now we want to use MySQL and that's the default value. So we'll leave it at MySQL right there. No biggie there, okay? And then if we come here, we're going to see the connections are all set up as an array inside this array. So the first one is SQL, SQLite, which we are not using. And then the next one is MySQL, which we will be using. So it means we are selecting which one to use right here. Okay. And we selected this one. So which means we have to change the configuration that is here. But wait. So there's uh, more here. All these are different kinds of connections to different kinds of databases. Yeah. Now, the thing is, if you look carefully here, there's this word called env right there, right? This is a function which gets the data from a file called environment or env, short for environment there. So looking at this uh, MySQL section here, you see that there's a database URL. So the URL is equal to database URL from the env file. And then here it has a comma on some of them and then it puts in a default value. So what it's saying here is that if the DB host from the environment file does not exist, use this as a default value. But if it exists, use this instead, right? So this is what it is here. So instead of us changing things here, let's go and change them in the environment since it seems to be reading from there anyway. So I'm going to close this one, config, we don't need you. Let's go down here to the main folder. There's this file called env right there. So let's click on that guy. Mm -hmm. So you can change your app name here. So let's change it to my blog. Yeah, that's our app name. But uh, I'm not sure about spaces here though. So let's just put an underscore there just in case. We'll test it out later. So my blog. Mm -hmm. And then the DB connection here is MySQL. So you can change it from here as the default. And then the host is localhost. This 127.0.0 is exactly like, is, is localhost. That's localhost is the alias for this IP address, right? So this is localhost here, we are good. 3306 is the default port for MySQL. So don't change that unless you changed it in the MySQL. Now here is the thing, the database name. Our database name is my blog like that. And then uh, the username is root and the password is empty. So if you do have a password, you can type it there. But otherwise, uh, this is all we need to do. Yeah, so now it knows what database to read from. So let's save that. And let's come back to the connection here. And we're saying return, it's a little from users. Mm -hmm. So let's try and run our content. Now I'm going to refresh. And looky there. Hmm. What do you see? It has loaded my data. Yeah. And what has it done? It is, uh, I don't know whether this is a browser feature or Laravel feature, but it recognized that this is JSON and then it converted to a JSON reader. That way it's nice and, and cool to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is very good. Let's see the raw data. So you just click here to see the raw data. This is the data right here. Yeah. So you may not have this uh, activate automatically on your system. You will see something like this instead, right? So same thing, this is just that my browser is helping me to read the JSON a little bit better like that. So that's how you read from a database. It's that simple. Uh, so let's come back here for a second. now. As you can see, this is not very useful because I don't want to display data like this. I want to have a view so I can put it inside a table, etc., etc. But uh, fear not, because we are going to do that just now.
So instead of returning the data, what we can do is assign it to a variable. So we're going to call that variable data like that and say equal to. And then what we do, we want to show a view. So what do we, how do we show a view? We say return a view. And what's the view name? Uh, we're going to call it to users like so. And then we want to supply some data. So in order to supply some data here, we use an array. So let's create an array, right? So I'm just going to call it ARR like this and create a space called data like that and then assign my data to that. Yeah, now I don't need to do this. I can do it directly here by just putting square brackets and then saying um, something like data and then comma, oh, not comma there, sorry, an arrow and then uh, supplying data like that, right? Let me put a semicolon there. So what I'm doing here is exactly this. So if I set this, then I can just get the AAR and supply it there. So I think it's more readable like this for beginners instead of doing it this way. So let's just do that. And let's do a or or like so. So we are assigning some value and setting it there. And this is all we need to do. Now we don't have this user's um, view. So let's create it, shall we? So we go to the resources folder and in here we have views, right? Where we have this welcome view, blah, blah, blah. And yes, so it depends. You might want to do it from here. That uh, That is okay if you want to uh, show the data from here. Maybe let's do that just to show that uh, we can show this data after all on the main page. So let me change this uh, view to welcome. That's a file name. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to here. And I just want to print at the very end of the page. Where is this? Let's see the page once more. This be the page. So at the very end here, at the very, or at the very top, let's start with the top, shall we? Let's go to the top. Uh, so right here, <coughs> I want to use blade and I'm going to say data, right? Hmm, wait a minute. Let me use it for each loop. For each, like I saw, data as a row, maybe. Let's call it row. That's about it. And then end for each, like so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right there, uh, we end the for each loop. And now I can echo some data. So let me just uh, echo uh, the usernames, right? I'm going to say row. We'll use a pointer because remember these are objects. So username, like I saw. And then I'll put a, a comma like that, just so there's a comma between names. And uh, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope it actually works. So it's saying undefined variable data. Hmm. So <clears throat> it doesn't know uh, the variable data. And that's because we are using the wrong, uh, uh, what we are doing here, we are on the home page and not on the user's page, which is the one that is running this controller here. Yeah, that's the reason why. So let's change that to users. And there we go. So we have these two names there. Okay, so we've seen that we can do this on this uh, page, but let's change that to users page. And let me get my uh, for each loop here. I'll take that, thank you very much. Then I will go to my views and create a new view. So let's create a new view here. And uh, all we have to do is paste that for each loop. Yeah. That's it. Let me save this. I'm going to save it as users.blade.php. Save. Okay. So now let's refresh. And there we go. So we have two items there. 
but if we wanted to create a table we can do that right here as you can see we already have the information that we need all we needed to do was create some kind of a table so let me do that just real quick here just to uh, show that uh, how it can be done okay so the table is going to be outside this because we don't want to loop through the table we just want to loop through the content and also the table head let me put a row here for a header th something like so mm -hmm. so this one is going to be um, username something like this and then what else do we have email and date yep email and then date exactly so then i'll copy that and paste it here inside the loop yeah so one of these and then we loop through to create this now th is going to change to td table data like so and then in the place of these guys i'm going to put my dynamic variables here yeah i'll put that one there put that one here and this one there and i will say date on this one and on this one i will say email okay and we are good to go so if i refresh i have a table of data mm -hmm. so that's how you read from the database now uh one moment <coughs> oh my god Ugh, COVID-19 there. Okay. So the thing is, when we did a DB, <coughs> sorry there, I used this select word here. So keep in mind, it's DB, select. Now we are not going to always use select. The only time you use this select is if there's a select keyword inside your, your query like this. And also, if you're going to use prepared statements, you can do that, right? Let's say, for example, we want to load just, um, uh, let's see, item number one here with the ID of one, right? So what I will do is create an array here. So I'm going to say, what will I call it? Um, I don't know, stuff. And then I'm going to say ID like so. And then once I put that ID there, I can set it to an actual id right so the id that i want is one so i'm going to equate it to one something like that okay and then select all from users there right then let's say where the id is equal to let's put a full colon and put id there but now because we've used that uh, this is a, a better way to do it because this is a prepared statement. That way you cannot be hacked in case there are values that you want to put here. They can't use SQL injection on you. So now we have to add this. Uh, so if you're going to, if you had many of these, let's say these variables, the, these placeholders, for each of these placeholders, you have to put one in that array. So that's why I've put ID there, ID there. And then I'm going to put a comma and put my uh, array which has the values so it can replace once it's running it can replace those values there okay so yeah i think this actually should work if i am not mistaken so it's going to run this query and then let's come back here and see what we get so let's see fingers crossed mm -hmm. so now you see we got id number two right or number one there so if i had changed this id to two then i will get record number two as you can see there which is quite uh, obvious but if i want to use my url here so let's say for example i want to have a slash one at the end like this then i get a little bit of a problem here because it's going to tell me that page is not found because it's not expecting any extras at the end there so in order to fix this we're going to go to our router here so if i want it to run like this when there's a when there's nothing there if i want it to read everything 
then what I can do is I can say uh, what can I do I can add a slash here put uh, brackets like so and then put ID like that so whatever I get from there is the ID right so how do I capture that well I just need to add ID here like that and it's going to automatically capture it so if I had several of those that I had put uh, then I can do this and keep going add in another one and so on but we only have one variable so this is going to be equal to that same ID over there so let's see how that works yeah mm -hmm. so we got number one and then if I type two here we got number two yeah so this is how you get from URL to actually reading something from the database yes yes but you may be asking um, uh, what else here yeah I think I've covered uh, pretty much what it is about what I was talking about earlier is oh but keep in mind that once you do this if I remove the two here then it will tell me the page is not found so if you still want it to work like that without the slash you can add another route here which doesn't have the ID like so and then this will still run yeah the only problem is once that runs it's not going to have a value for the ID so let's try that for a second let me refresh yeah so too few arguments right mm -hmm. uh, too few arguments applied in this part right here because there's no arguments applied here but the the controller is expecting an argument so what you can do here instead is to put a now like that so id is equal to now that way even without that we still get something but if i try this we won't get any result so that way what we can say is um, wait a minute here so what we can say here is to check if this is a null so all I'm going to say is if let me do this if ID like that which means it's not a null value then let's run that right however if it's not which means um, <clears throat> which means it's a null which means it's empty then we can remove all this up to here so let's remove all that and let's remove all that so that we can read everything so what i'm saying in other words is if an id is not provided read everything if an id is provided just select that id right so let's see that in action so refresh and i get everything but then if i do a slash two like that i get one one of those right so as you can see it's very dynamic uh, how things work here and also I wanted to mention that this DB select there is not uh, uh, the only thing you can use if you go back to our system here you will notice that if you go down here there's a DB select here and it shows you that there's also insert if you're inserting something into the database it even shows you examples here now the thing is here they use question marks like this but instead of using question marks like that do it the way i did it where you put a foo colon and the name of the variable then you put the variables inside an array which you pass in here like that but you can follow this format if you want so there's also update there's also delete so the difference is that delete returns the deleted uh, content here i think yeah if i'm not mistaken so you can read up on this what's going on here so you can figure things out if you don't want prepared statements you can use db unprepared and so on all right so hopefully you've learned uh, something new here and uh, we are going to see how another way of connecting to the database which uses models so i'll see you in the next video